Please join us in welcoming CEO of Dubai Airport, Paul Griffiths. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Let me begin by taking you on a journey back in time, about 200 years. It's the height of the Industrial Revolution in Europe. Rapid technical change is transforming nations from a largely rural economy to one dominated by industry and machine manufacturing. Whilst the marvels of technological change introduce new ways of working, they also change the lives of millions and fundamentally transformed the society into the one we know today. The rapid growth of urbanization created the cities in which we live and work. And in a very short space of time, important developments in transportation and communication including the steam locomotive, the steamship, the automobile, the aeroplane, the telegraph and radio, gave birth to the foundations of modern society. Against this backdrop of rapid change, a young entrepreneur decided that workers in cities need to use their day off to escape the crowding of the cities into the green of the countryside. He created the first recorded journey involving all-inclusive travel arrangements, and in 1841, took a group of 571 people on a day trip between Leicester and Loughborough in the UK, using the then new innovative railway system over the colossal distance of 12 miles. The package, intriguingly, included meals and, we're told, music played on brass instruments, not something you see in a package tour today. In the USA alone, for context, the number of people Traveling overseas at that time was less than a thousand per year. Today, the number of US travelers traveling outbound from the country is 25 million. And then, as now, the motives for organized travel were virtuous and a force for good. Travel was intended to broaden the mind and help people out of the drudgery of everyday life. Travel and tourism has always been fueled by innovation. The development of the railways in the 19th century providing the first real boost in affordable mobility. And then, during the next hundred years, innovations in mobility continued to develop. The horse and carriage giving way to the motor car. Interestingly, at the turn of the 20th century, electric cars outnumbered gasoline cars by almost two to one. And guess what? A hundred years later, electric cars still had the range of about 10 miles. And then, of course, came my favorite invention, the aeroplane. The pace of innovation intensified in the 20th century, a time of great ocean liners and fast, comfortable, long-distance rail travel shrank the globe and fueled that romantic notion. Technical innovation also reached a particular high point just over 50 years ago. In 1969, the confluence of ambition craft and skill created the first supersonic flight of Concorde, the maiden voyage of the QE2 ocean liner between Southampton and New York, the inauguration of the Boeing 747 jumbo jet, the first steps on the moon, and the Harrier vertical takeoff jump jet. However, it took another year for the most revolutionary development in travel and tourism to emerge, which arguably 
has had a much greater influence on the 1.5 billion annual international journeys recorded in 2019. Because it was in 1970 that a US inventor filed his patent with the US Patent Office to create arguably the invention that has given billions of travelers all over the world the greatest transformation in personal mobility that we may ever see in our lifetimes. Yes, it was Bernard Sado that first gave us wheels on a suitcase. This story is quite remarkable, mostly for the way we accepted the status quo of carrying heavy suitcases 5,000 years after the invention of the wheel. Even hamsters got wheels before we put them on our luggage. But the serious point is one of perspective. Technical innovation and change is often hampered by our lack of foresight and our own human resistance to even the simplest of solutions. Change isn't necessarily about striving for the most difficult and complex solutions, and many of the most transformative in, uh, innovations, such as wheels on suitcases, look blindingly obvious in hindsight, but were clearly not obvious before then. The pace of change technologically is intensifying and some of the greatest challenges to convention over the past few years have been simple and obvious, but previously impossible until the transformational power of the technology that we now take for granted was unleashed. And predictions of how technology will change our lives is almost universally wrong. We were told in the 60s that cheap energy would make it unnecessary to insulate our homes and offices against heat or cold, and how computers would do all of our work for us so we could spend our time at leisure, and predictions that faxes, emails, and instant message would make our lives simpler and less frenetic have all been proven completely wrong. Fortunately, so was the recent prediction that video conferencing would have a dramatic impact on the demand for travel. This would seem like the moment to say how wonderful it is to be able to see everyone here in three highly tangible dimensions. However, technology may not be having the effect originally predicted, but that doesn't mean that it's anything short of profound. Take the transformation of the retail business. Before the start of the last decade, if we wanted to buy something, we had to travel to a store, choose from a limited range of options and prices, hope that the store had it in stock, and then transport it home with us. That cost us time and money and often created disappointment. Now we can shop without leaving our chairs, and that bewildering array of millions of products from all over the world can be delivered to our doorstep in record time. Sometimes the benefits to the consumer sit behind the technology. The reason that Uber and other taxi apps are so prevalent is that they have bound each individual taxi together into an integrated network designed to optimize the movement of the entire taxi fleet of a city, to bring efficiencies that were unthinkable when each individual taxi had to ply the streets in the hope of finding a potential customer. Now taxi apps are like real-time dating apps, constantly matching the supply of taxis to travel a need and optimizing journeys into the most effective, efficient, and available for both driver and passenger. However, there are many more opportunities for transformation within our industry and a pressing need to do so. We're facing a new reality with the urgent need to embed sustainability practices into everything we do. The term necessity is the mother of invention can be traced back to the sixth century before the common era. However, it is as true today as it was then.
We now have the technology to deconstruct the inconveniences of humanity and reconstruct them in a more beneficial way. Let me give you a couple of examples of what I believe are those wheels on a suitcase opportunities. A 12 ounce can of soft drink costs about 80 cents in the US. If you put just one single can on a typical jet plane and fly it from here to London and back every day for a year, that 80 cent 12 ounce can will consume almost 200 US dollars in jet fuel alone, about 250 times the cost of the can. And that tiny can would be responsible for the generation of almost 1.2 tons of CO2. Multiply that by the number of in-flight retail products that are carried on every flight, many of which remain unsold at the end of the journey, plus the weight of highly flammable liquid carried on board by airline customers. The amount of jet fuel alone that's consumed and CO2 generated transporting products that could be sold virtually in the air and delivered conveniently on the ground runs into billions of dollars per year. Plus, we're reiterating all of the shortcomings and disappointments of the old retail model that companies such as Amazon have swept aside. It's also a massive business opportunity, delivering the same efficiencies of the e-commerce sector that have delivered exponential growth in market share. Amazon now commands almost 40% of all online sales in the USA. So, Airline executives have to take their companies on a massive weight reduction program to not only save money and improve customer service, but also to tackle the carbon footprint of air travel that is proving so difficult to abate in the short term. Surely, in addition to in-flight retail, magazines, menus, and other service items that could be turned into weightless and sustainable digital services must be the way forward. However, now I must also turn my attention to airport designers. First of all, please understand that airport managers like myself should not be in the business of operating complexes and managing infrastructure. The hardware is simply the means. The end product that we should all be striving to achieve is the delight of the customer, usually created by making sure the interface with our product is as brief as it possibly can be. And why do we insist when journeys start and end in many different locations, enforcing everyone through the same and vast monolithic architecture creating monumental walking distances, queues, crowding, and all sorts of unpleasant experiences to induce stress, discomfort, and delay to our customers. Does this really have to be the future of airport design? Let's predict the impact that technolog technology will have on travel, and I hope this is more accurate than some of my predecessors. Firstly, why do all the formalities of travel, such as booking, check-in, security, immigration, why do they have to take place at the most disruptive and independent landmarks on the customer journey? Can this, in our modern age of technical aggregation, not be achieved seamlessly before the start of each journey? We don't need to see complex networks and computing power making all of our taxis appear at our doorstep so quickly. So why have a raft of seemingly rigid and bureaucratic processes set against our direction of travel, like trying to push a shopping trolley across a series of railway tracks? So here's a question for you. Why do airports and airlines need to force every passenger through a single point for check-in, security, and immigration? The answer is for the convenience of the airline and airport operator. It's cheaper to make people queue for a common resource, but it's also intensely annoying for the customer. And here's another thing. Airport designers, please remember that the length of the average human step 
is about two and a half feet. When you travel back home or abroad or wherever you go by air, have a look at your phone and see how many steps you take in a day when you travel by air. Usually, I make about 10,000 steps, which is about five miles. So please stop making us anxious by forcing us to cover vast distances when we travel through airports, which, having forced us to wait in line several times, creates needless anxiety when we fear we may miss our plane, often located well out of sight in what seems to be a distant universe. Why not stick to the premise of small is beautiful in airport design? We all love those small local airports where you can see the planes when you pull up to the terminal, which never seem crowded, have short walking distances and uncomplicated and understandable signage. Instead, is there another way? Instead of building these great vast terminals and losing all of these intimate characteristics in vast swathes of concrete, glass and steel, let's build several smaller airports within a larger airport where compact terminals with individual road and rail connections can share the economies of scale of a large airfield and runway, thus eliminating the need to aggregate every traveller from their original individual origin, only to disaggregate them again when they head off to catch their plane. Let's bring back the romance and convenience of air travel by making journeys seem more intimate and individual, dealing with the formalities in the background, relieving customers of their bags at the start of their journey and returning them to them at the end, making no one walk more than 200 meters from their car or train to their plane and eliminate queues and crowds forever. Let's be true to the altruistic force for good on which our industry was based all those years ago. And before you roll your eyes and say, this guy is just dreaming, it will never happen. Just remember this. However fanciful some of these predictions might appear today, tomorrow they may seem as obvious as putting wheels on a suitcase. Thank you.